Welcome back everyone to Project Zomboid. So we're back, but things are a little different. I mean, I wandered around, I had a good night's sleep. Well, I didn't really, I started sleeping at five, I went for seven hours, I figured that would be enough for the time being. But our inventory load is a little bit different right now. I was equipping the axe, but let me go ahead and re-equip. Actually, the axe should be fine, but no, let's, let's re-equip the frying pan just to take the strain off the axe, which is gonna have a lot of trees to cut down. Okay, so I have right here on the road my big hiking bag, which is now uh, the exclamation mark B for back. Double underscore there, just so that if I do ever find the original single underscore big hiking bag, uh, I, I don't, I can distinguish between them. They're not identically named. And also over here we have this other normal hiking bag, which was the bag I was carrying around for the most of part, but um, I read also, you can see, 145 pages out of the Carpentry for Beginners. What this does in your crafting, you can see these arrows, just indicates that um, if I look at a normal thing, a normal square, it just says XP boost and then um, the current XP I'm at. But if you read a book, it'll give you this multiplier. Now that is, um, should be at, that number multiplied by 100 should be added to 100 to give you your rate of learning. When you, and then you add XP bonus on top of that. So for example, for Carpentry level two, I would normally, normal person progresses at 100%. Let me just do a combat spin real fast, make sure we aren't gonna die in an explanation. In fact, I can just pause it, that would be even safer. So uh, in this case, we would, a normal person learns at 100%. Um, we, would, because of our XP boost, the bottom thing, just because we're a handyman or whatever it was, handy, uh, we would learn at 175%. So already almost double, almost twice better than a normal person. But now we have this other multiplier, 1.8. So we actually learn at 280%, and then you add the XP bonus on top of that, so it's 350%, I think. I think, that's not, I'm not guaranteeing that that's the way it works, but that's my understanding. So it's pretty insane that multiplier is, it doesn't make sense if you just think of it as a multiplier like two times, because uh, you start with a multiplier of 0.2 when you only read a few pages. And uh, if you just thought of that as a multiplier, that would mean that until you read up to 1.0 in the multiplier, reading a book on carpentry makes you dumber. <laughs> I think that that doesn't make sense. Pretty clear that doesn't make sense. So I'm pretty sure that what they mean by multiplier is that add one to this number. So this is actually a 2.8 multiplier. Uh, add one to this number and then you can actually treat it as a true multiplier. So when you're at 0.3, it's actually 1.3, which means you're 30% better. Anyways, long story about math, over with, who cares about that? Uh, just shows you that um, reading the books really does help. It's more than my XP boost for being handy. However, it takes the time investment. Now, uh, I have all these logs ready to be fixed up. But the very first thing we're going to do is actually investigate nearby houses. The reason why I have the bag like this, this is kind of my normal way of doing things, is that once you have a safe house, we're not, we don't really have a safe house. Obviously we have just dumped two bags on the ground, but normally I would displace items into different areas of the house, organized in a manner which is, uh, I don't know, makes me happy, makes my OCD happy. Um, so in a way that I understand at least, so I can quickly find items. What, like, it's, it makes sense, the logical way of doing it, like bathroom items, I usually use medical, all the medical stuff goes into a bathroom container. The ones by the kitchen end up being where almost all of my storage goes, um, but specifically, obviously, all the cooking stuff. So what we're going to do, and it is nighttime out, so I'll have to be a little careful, and I don't think, does this character have the burglar thing, I think it only has handy, athletic, strong, yeah, it doesn't have the, the night vision, the cat burglar, whatever one. So we're just gonna walk around and we're gonna accrue from the fridges and everything else, all this stuff. And we gotta be a little bit quick about this because we gotta get these things back into the fridge. I also want, okay, we'll take one roasting pan just to make sure we have at least one of those. And I will take, uh, I don't think we need a saucepan, but I'll take one just to be safe. Uh, I'll take the seeds just for fun. 
And now we are looking for a cooking pot. Although I know we have one, we might want to make more than one. So let's just bounce from house to house, quickly investigating and taking the items we need. Uh, okay, this is a bedroom. Come on, guys, let's turn on the light in here. Make it a little easier for me. Where's the darn kitchen? Here it is. Okay, corn, strawberries, sure, we'll just take it because it's better to get all this stuff um, into one location anyway. Makes things a lot easier than having to run all over the place for it. So we'll take all these three things. We don't need the bleach. Um, good to know that this is where we will, we can kill ourselves if we need to. And there's our cooking pot. So now I don't want to take any more cooking pots or baking pans or frying pans, whatever they are. They're pretty heavy. They're pretty bulky. So um, speaking of hunger, I think we have... Okay, so let's just quickly eat a strawberry. It's fine. Let's just eat this entire thing. That should keep us satisfied for a while. Our water bottle is otherwise tying us over for thirst. Okay, so what do we have here? Can opener, cooking pot. We don't need either of those things. A dead body. Certainly don't want that. And I guess there's no fridge? Okay, well, house without a fridge. Sounds like a terrible place to me, but it's a small little home, so maybe they just... Huh, sounds like somebody's in the bathroom. Yeah, 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 I heard you. But I don't really want to be killing people just because this is about looting and scooting. The loot and scoot dan disco dance. I'll take the water bottle. There's going to be a million of them. Okay, this is important. And that's it from this house. And since we're so close, let's just go ahead and drop this stuff off. Okay, we'll, we'll loot one more house and then we'll drop this stuff off. And this actually, when I stayed in that one house that we're gonna end up dropping everything off at, this actually ended up being my backup fridge because I had too much stuff stored in the previous one. Okay, this things we don't need. Okay, so everything's good here. Let's, I wanna turn on these lights though. Whoop, it was on. Just make it a little easier to see. So this is, it is 1.30 in the morning. All right, so now this is gonna be the drop-off point. Pause. Now we gotta go and get all the fresh things and dump them in here. In fact, we might as well just dump everything in here. But specifically, we have to dump the fresh stuff in here. Butter we'll put in here as well. And we'll just let all that happen very quickly. While it's doing it, I'm gonna look what else we have? I'm perfect. So I can store all my um, other stuff here temporarily. And by other stuff, I mean my medical supplies. Oh, and okay, let's put the bowls in here. Let's put the cooking pot stuff here first. And I'll dispose of the medical supplies somewhere else, just briefly. Okay, cooking pans. Basically, all the red wine, juice box, that's fine. So, juice box, I think. Should go in the fridge. Okay, corn, that's fine. Just put all this here and see what's left over. Okay, so we're gonna be using the cooking pot to make a big old stew. Uh, we have a kitchen knife, I think. I might have to go loot a kitchen knife from the other bag. I don't think I kept the kitchen knife. Um, we also wanna get this juice box into the fridge. That makes sense to me at least. I, I think that's where it belongs. And all this stuff is all medical stuff, so let's see, is there a place where we can dump it quickly? I like to dump it into empty places because I'm a little OCD like that, so we'll just use this old little storage area, put all our medical supplies there. And this is a pretty safe area. I know I've continuously mentioned how this is a safe area, maybe we should be living here permanently, but I think we will try to live in somewhere else in the end, but it's not a bad place for the time being, at least to so we can start doing our crafting stuff. All right, so this is just a pure medical supplies thing. Let's go down and get the kitchen knife from one of these bags, I think this one. Kitchen knife, there it is. So we'll put that into our inventory because we will need to cut some things up. And now if we see watermelon, for example, we can also grab that. Okay, good, so back to looting and scooting. And we're running through areas which we've mostly cleared out of zombies, and that's course the huge advantage of not having them respawning all the time that you actually can make this dent in the population but all you ever do is loot and scoot when you don't have when you have the normal um, mechanics enabled 
because there's just so many zombies, it's really hard to... Did I miss anything? No. Um, you can't make a dent in them fast enough to really slow them down. Uh, they just continuously overwhelm you if you try to fight. So, I kind of like the way we've done things here. Although, I would, I will concede that I don't think... I'm not sure any human would be able to fight off the zombies as I have done. Uh, it depends on their level of intelligence, you know, their combat skills, as it were. Um, which, maybe they are pretty weak, but... We're going to take this cooking for intermediates because I forgot to read. So, I might just show the reading very quickly at the highest speed. Just to give us a small cooking boost. Okay, things are getting hard to see. I don't like that at all. Is that a light switch? Light switch. The light switch. Oh, damn it. There. God, that was hard. Life is so hard getting light switches. Hmm, cooking pot we have. I, I do want two more bowls. We're two bowls short of a set of four. And four is the magic number for dumping ingredients into uh, from your stew into the um, into different bowls, so you can store it. It's better that way, I think. So, take these things. And do you have anything else of interest? Yeah, we'll take the salmon. So the salmon was in the freezer. That's interesting. I don't normally store salmon in the freezer. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Well, this house is burned down. We have a few few zombies up there. Ah, uh, we're getting to the areas which are a little bit more uh, overrun with zombies. So our looting and scooting has to be a little more efficient and it's a little more dangerous. <laughs> I could be carrying the axe on both of my hands, which I probably should be doing, because... Ah, a bull. We only have the bag on our back. Let me just go ahead and do that to preserve our life. So, equip in both hands. Good. So this is just possibly going to save our life. Hopefully it doesn't come down to that. But, okay, another bowl, and now we have enough bowls. These TV dinners are, are just such a mystery to me. No matter what you do, they cause unhappiness. And that's just such garbage to me, to my, in my opinion. TV dinners, those are like things you look forward to. I mean, as a kid, you know when you had those nights when mom and dad were going out or whatever, and... <laughs> Babysitters are going to come over, and the most exciting thing is, oh, we get to have TV dinners for dinner. <laughs> to a kid, that's really exciting. I mean, I have to admit, even as an adult, TV dinners, I know that they're not healthy, but they're certainly not, they don't cause boredom or lack of satisfaction or whatever. So, I, I disagree with the premise here that TV dinners would be upsetting to individuals to consume. Yeah but that's my own two cents on it. I guess the game developers had, maybe they had uh, evil babysitters who came over and uh, <laughs> when they, they forced the TV dinners down their throats, uh, a much harsher view of the world developed. Okay, we see a zombie in here. We're still gonna risk it. Oh, I got a few zombies here too. They don't see me yet, although it's not entirely impossible that they won't, that they will hear me. Ah, they didn't. Looks like we're going to get away with this one. Aha! Got away with murder. Okay, it's still potentially dangerous to walk into this house. Let's just open and shut the door. So it's unlocked from now on. Let's find a light switch if I can. Where that? Oh, there it is, hidden behind the lamp. There we go. Much better. Appears to be more or less the same design as the place we're currently kind of using as a camp. And that's helpful, so you know the layout right away. Okay, let's just get all this stuff. And that's probably more than we need of all the things here. Ooh! Okay, so frozen pizza does make sense as a frozen item. I'll take the butter knife, because I like those as weapons. It's a twisted thing, I know, but we'll take this, this, this. And you can see how I do this. I usually actually loot things in pause mode. It's a little more efficient, as I've already mentioned a million times. So we'll take this, this, more canned goods. Um, we'll take the cereal and the salt. 
And I think that's all we need for now. Out of here. Okay, so we'll unlock and shut that. Actually, let's leave it open. I like to leave things open. If I've already mentioned this, I apologize. But just because the zombies will break it down if you don't leave it open. And I prefer to have things less broken down so that if I, for example, need to run through a door and grab something, the door is not already broken down. Like, let's not have the zombies breaking down materials unless it's uh, there's a good reason for them to be doing it. Like, that material is protecting me for the moment. But if they're just off screen, you know, in the middle of nowhere breaking down a door, that doesn't serve me any purpose. So I see the lady here. Oh, here she comes. I want to do this quietly, but I don't know if there's anybody else in this house. So I gotta be very careful here. Tortoise is a cautious one. He wants to survive. I think I've been here before, or I guess all the layouts of the houses are more or less the same. And we have to remember we're not here for just, you know, marching around, killing zombies. We're here specifically to get food and leave. And this house looks pretty well looted. I mean, I have definitely been in this house. <laughs> yeah, if it's not proof already, there's dead zombies just everywhere. All right, let's go ahead and drop this stuff all off. Actually, I can go into this house too. Whoa. I'm... Whoa, I... That was like a chilling moment for me. I was like 100% sure I had been in this house. And then a moment later, I was like, I have never been in this house. I almost just ran in there and... No, I've definitely been in here. It's completely looted. So strange. I guess I just didn't leave the back door unlocked. All right, well, let's turn the light on. There it is. I should have done that first. Could possibly save my life. And... Three zombies. I want to go into this building, so I'm actually going to kill these zombies. I know where we are now. Okay, so we're... We're there. <laughs> probably not the best explanation. We're just adjacent to... Let's get this guy first. Oh, wow. That was good. Okay. And nothing here. So I'm going to go into this house now, which could have zombies in it. Kind of pie the corner. I want to turn that light on, too. It does, You know, it doesn't help that you have this creepy music. Okay, so now this door's unlocked. Nope, let's actually leave it open. I don't see any zombies worth keeping out for the time being. And leave the light on. All right, jackpot. Lots of stuff here. Instant popcorn, that's useful. Cereal, canned stuff, whoops. Flour, whoops, I didn't even really mean to take that, but we'll take it, I guess. Take the garbage pan, the red wine, take all that stuff. All seems good to me. And we have one last thing down here, butter knife and the chips. Chips aren't really important right now. We're just going to start hoarding them so that eventually, if we start running out of uh, food that will spoil, we can start switching over to the chips and stuff like that. All right, so now let's actually get to cooking. Let's see all the different things we can do. So let me put... All right, so let me try to get the things that should be frozen into the freezer. I think I'm convinced that all these things are fine where they are. Let's get the frozen pizza into the freezer, though. Which, if I'm not... Okay, let's, let's just start by doing the things we know should go in the fridge. So all these things. Beef jerky, why not? We'll do bread because it's fresh, even though I don't keep bread in a fridge. It really toughens out that way. Though I guess it does, supposedly at least, keep it from spoiling a little bit longer. Ham in here, that makes sense. These things, sure. Uh-huh. Yep. And now this pizza goes in this other, the freezer. But that's the only thing I really think is supposed to go in there. The salmon, okay, the salmon was from the freezer, so let's just put it back where it was. And that is the loot and scoot, take a bag with you, um, in a nutshell. Eventually, we're going to fill up this fridge, but 
Right now we're only at like 10 out of 40, so we're doing okay, only a quarter of the way there. All right, and now with that all done, we can start preparing some kind of delicacy for ourselves. And with uh, having read our cookbook, which I guess I'll just briefly showcase, I don't know if it's really interesting, but in order to just get better at the, huh, we've been reading the wrong thing. Yeah, I need to actually read the cookbook. I didn't read them yet. And it's not a cooking, but this is intro to cooking. A cookbook implies that you're gonna learn new recipes. Farming, carpentry, do we have everything but cooking for beginners? Apparently. Uh, well, it doesn't really matter. We can just, we can wing it. Let me uh, put this in my inventory, just because I like to know I have, ah, so we have cooking for intermediates, but there's a cooking for beginners somewhere. You know what? Um, well, we have all the ingredients we need for cooking. We can still address that. Do we take everything out that is... Oh, we have a steak. I forgot a steak. Kind of weird the way you would just put a steak in your bag. I don't know if that's the way it should work, but that's fine. We'll let it work that way. Cabbage seeds don't belong in there, but we will put chips, cereal, canned tomatoes, chili, two more bowls, flour. Let's put these, um, I think these are both intact. Yeah, these are both good. So let's put both of them in there. Just for These will be cooking, not for use as a weapon. Peanut butter's fine and red wine, rice, salt. And I think we have a, I thought we had a couple water bottles, but, oh, we need to take one water bottle with us, obviously. Okay. But we, we have one, we're still okay. All right, let's get all that stuff out of there. Oh, there's so many things we can, well, we're just gonna have to go with it. Let's speed this up a little bit. Whoops. Okay. There, and we're actually getting hungry, so it is time to cook. Let's just go ahead and bite the bullet. I would like to read, probably as soon as we create one thing here, I'll go back off camera and find that cookbook and start reading it. However, we can make roasted vegetables, as we've already seen in a previous episode. We could do a stir fry, maybe make some sandwiches by slicing bread. That's why I had to have the kitchen knife. My favorite thing to do in general, though, is something we can't do. Why can't we make a stew? My favorite thing is to make a stew. Oh, right, of course, because we actually need a pot of water. So let's get one cooking pot, put it in our inventory. And now we're gonna fill this cooking pot with water. And that's gonna allow us to do some more things, which I think are the best options. In my opinion, you get more food out of doing it this way. Whoa. <laughs> no, 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 you, you misunderstood me, game. <laughs> I, I want to make good food. Can I, can I make some good food? There it is. Okay, so we have the options to do either a pot of soup or a pot of stew. Let's just look at the different items we can get away with here. Chicken, mutton, where we have plenty of mutton. I think we have a lot of steak. So we probably should choose the one with steak. Although the salmon, maybe we can get rid of that. The steak can go into this stew though. Uh, it looks like steak you can also put in the freezer. Okay, so I guess you can put um, all this steak stuff in. Does it have to be thawed first? I'm so confused. Let's do stew, can we do salmon? Yeah, okay, so let's do salmon stew and I wanna see how uncooked frozen um, makes this whole thing work. So we'll go ahead and unpause and start adding things. Now don't keep adding ingredients, uh, ingredients to a new stew. Uh, of course, if you only have one pot of water, that won't be a, an option even. Now we can go ahead and put different things in here. Okay, so like leeks. You're not gonna use this for anything but stew or soup. <laughs> it's not something you wanna eat. Like corn you can eat, but eggplant, probably another thing that you're not gonna do anything with other than eat. Radish, probably the same way. Let's go ahead and add some more salmon. Cause I don't, yeah, well now we have no more salmon and then tomatoes just seems like a natural thing to add. So we'll add that as well. And I think we can only get away with one more thing. Onion sounds good with all those different ingredients. And now we have our maxed out pot of stew. We're gonna go ahead and turn this on and put that pan. Salmon and vegetable stew. It's delicious. 
Sounds delicious. So we're going to get that to cook. Uh, right now it's... Uh, okay, that's not the thing I want. Right now it's dangerous uncooked, but soon, as soon as we turn that on, it should start getting red. As you can barely see, it's probably just barely going to red. Now it's getting more and more red. And this thing will start to cook very soon. There it is, cooking. Okay, so that's that. The other thing we want to do, and we might as well start this while the food is being cooked, is we're going to do carpentry. We're going to get... Oh, but carpentry was the book I was reading, right? Yeah, so this is the one we have a massive multiplier to. So we'll probably get to level 2 in this almost instantly. And then I can go find uh, carpentry for intermediates, and we can read that. So we just... Having it on the ground is sufficient, so we'll go to carpentry. And we're just going to start crafting all of these in the planks. Because this is a simple way to get your carpentry skill up. I think at some point it caps out. And mind you, we need to dump all the planks we get back on the ground. Good, they are doing that. That's fantastic. And we'll craft all here. Lots of stuff. Let me hit C to see how our skill's going up. So we're at 61. 76. 76. Okay, there it is. 91. It jumped up. Okay, I guess spinning around is not what you're supposed to do because there's still some logs here. So we'll just have to be extra careful about this. <laughs> is our saw taking abuse? Nope. Saws don't have any kind of... I guess you can't wear out the teeth on the saw, which doesn't make sense, but that's fine. And we're almost up to level 2. You can see our even our cooking just from doing that one thing. We didn't even finish cooking it, but... Um, it already gave us, you know, about a quarter of the way to level two. And we have more over here we can probably do. Come on. Let me have some more. Go back. Craft all. This should be enough to jump us to level three. There it is. All right. So let's just stop because I want to make sure we don't burn our food. Getting our carpentry up is good because eventually we're going to want to build our own stuff. Okay, this is still cooking. It has It's only halfway there, so let's just go ahead and... Well, I don't want to waste time. So we might as well read the, something else that we have. What's another book that we have? Well, we could just do... Uh, cut up some more things, I guess, but... Let's read. Fishing. Farming. Farming, perfect. Let's do farming for beginners while we're waiting. Go back in here. Click on this and let this reading begin while we watch and see that this doesn't burn. Um, the shortcuts for this are F2, 3, 4, 5, F1, or um, 3 is this, 4 is this, and 5 is this. So we went to F5. You can see it's going a lot faster now while we read. So we're reading here while we're watching the food cook. And I'll hit F2 to drop this back down to normal speed. And take it out. Turn it off. Uh, let's just Okay, I think there's a way you can do it. Yeah, you can throw it into here. That already cooled off though, so it's fine. So you know what? Let's just move it into our container. Now, the next thing that's important is you can actually get more out of this if, the last thing I'll mention for this video at least, is if you make bowls of stew. So we're gonna make four bowls of stew. And notice that our weight encumbrance actually went up. The reason for this is I think somehow by magic, it's really magic, or it's what it's saying is somehow you get more food out of four bowls than you do from your one um, pot. Maybe you're more efficient at eating in smaller amounts, or I don't know what the exact abstraction is. However, we have our empty cooking pot, but we have four bowls of fresh cooked stew. Now, for some reason, this adds plus one boredom and plus one happiness. But the good news is we can go ahead and, well, well, we'll just drop three bowls into there, here. And we'll eat one ourselves. So eat, let's just eat half of this and see what it does. Takes us from peckish to nothing. Okay, let's eat all of it. And does that take us up to well-fed or fed? Well-fed. Okay, so you can see one bowl of this is extremely good. So now we'll go ahead and rinse, repeat. Start the whole cycle over again, and we can do some more cooking. So off camera, this is what I'm gonna do. Probably go raiding for some more stuff. Um, I'm gonna look for the carpentry book. 
I'm going to look for the cooking book. Oh, we have the carpentry. I'm going to look for intermediate carpentry and for um, the book for cooking so we can read that and get our cooking skill up. But we're already starting to develop um, a self-sufficient lifestyle. And that's really what I usually do over here, in fact. Uh, so what I could do is with the axe, I could start cutting down some of the trees just on the top of this house because if you want to live in an area, I find that the best way of doing it is to make a really large opening around you so that you can see zombies very easily. It's still good to have some kind of line of trees available so that you can you know, use those to lose any zombies. But in general, I, I prefer to see zombies. The worst thing, and the so, it's so scary, is when you're cutting down trees, um, they sneak up on you, man. <laughs> so we're doing down here, we're chopping away. Not the tree I really cared about chopping, but sometimes they'll just sneak right out of the trees. It scares you half to death. But Okay, so we're going to have to call this video to a close. We're running a little bit over on time. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more Life in the Apocalypse with Tortoise to Power. Long live Tortoise to Power. Until the next one, take care.